Hello everyone, Argsy here. We are taking a first look at Legacy Agricultural Contracting's first four buildings that they are going to be releasing. Now these are going to be for PC only to start with. Uh, Legacy may strip down some of the scripts that we're going to look at and make them console compatible in the future. But for now, they are only going to be PC. Now you might recognize these from Ashton Corners. Uh, Farm some guy and I took a first look at that the other day and uh, these are the sheds that have been used to make one of the farms there which our legacy has built for MRG so very nice to have these here as individual placeables which uh, you can use on any map so there's four sheds in the well it's not a pack but there's four sheds included here that we're looking at uh, on the left here we have got the shop uh, workshop in there and cold store building on the end Building down here at the end, this is a hayloft which will store straw and hay. Works similar to a lot of haylofts, uh, particularly the one that is in game, the default hayloft. On the right here, we've got a garage, three bay garage, and it does have a small loft space in there which you can go up uh, and we will have a look at that. And then the fourth building is the dairy here, which is a uh, 500 head dairy with pasture out the back, uh, milking parlour, and everything that comes with the dairy inside, including a few extra features that we will go and take a look at in just a little bit so those are the four sheds we've also got one other pack that we're going to have a look at and one other mod that legacy has been working on and that is a pro seed box and uh, we'll take a look at that in just a little while once we've gone through each and every one of the sheds so we'll start off over here and take a look at the shop so the shop here two main parts we've got the workshop here on the left and the cold store on the right We'll just come in here into the person door. Now one thing, we actually go in, I love the textures, uh, the quality and detail to these, the attention to detail everywhere. Look at that, the tap, no need for it there, apart from the fact you'd probably have a tap on the side of your building. Uh, even down the back here, power line coming in, a meter, power meter and everything there. And it uh, looks like a heat pump air conditioning unit or possibly a compressor for in the shed. So just that little attention to detail and all these bits and pieces that have been added on. I do like the little LAC logo, Legacy's got his logo up there, but uh, very, very nicely detailed. But let's get inside and take a look at what you get in here. We get the person door open there and we head on through. So Legacy would like to say a huge shout out and thank you, particularly on this building, to Thunder, Trailer Park Farms and Louisiana Mapping. Now they are claiming this is the first workshop shop building in Farming Simulator history that has both a workshop trigger and a wash bay. We're going to take a look at that in just a second. You can see the workshop trigger down there in the pit. And over on the wall is our uh, pressure washer. Doors. Now the attention to the triggers is fantastic. I have not found a trigger that I can't use without an overlap. So for example, lights. We turn the lights on. Didn't get the door. We didn't close the door or anything like that. And they turned on. Uh, the triggers are very, very well located and very nice and accessible. Let's take a look here at the pressure washer. Here we go. You bring your vehicle in here. We've got the drainage grate down the bottom, and you could wash your vehicle, or bring it out here out into the yard and wash down in front. Very, very nice. Does have the restrictions on the hose length that has come with the game. Uh, which I'm not a fan of. I think uh, I liked how it was in 19 where you got to the length you could go and you couldn't go any further or it uh, stopped working. Uh, well, it does stop working in 22, doesn't it? Then down here, we'll hop down into the pit and we just walk up into here. We've got our workshop trigger. Obviously, we don't have a vehicle in here to test it out on at the moment, but this is, this is fantastic. I do like it. Very, very nicely done indeed. We'll just hop back up out of there. So a nice combo to have both the pressure washer and the workshop. Some great detail, uh, lots and lots of features there. We've even got a uh, vehicle overview screen from the game there. Uh, very cool. But this nice little detail that you'd expect to see in a workshop. And if we go through the other end here, this is just a rather large cold store. We do have a roller door there. We'll just hop through. Uh, but we can shut that off. So you can have the uh, workshop separate to any storage couple of decent sized doors, one on the side, one on the end. Now, these aren't the biggest sheds that have ever been made. Uh, they were made specifically for Ashton Corners, so they were uh, based on the size of the farms that they needed to work on there. But uh, I think they are a very good size for what the majority of equipment will require. So I think uh, they will work very well. So that is our shop building and uh, cold store. And uh, good start to the pack. I do really like that. I love the two triggers in there. So the next building we are going to look at here, this is the hayloft or storage loft for 
uh, hay and straw it does take both and it will take loose and bales as well we will uh, test that out very soon i have just got a person door here come on through a couple of door triggers and we've got some lights on the wall somewhere too probably back down by the door there we go they both open up and there's our lights so again i have had absolutely no issues finding triggers they have all worked uh, seamlessly on all the buildings but very nice a good little bit of storage in here you could put a uh, skid steer or you could bring your feed wagon or something like that in here and store that out of the way uh, for when you're not using it trigger dump point here at this end and i do have some vehicles lined up we will go over and uh, test all of these things out before the end of this uh, little preview and then at the other end you can come down and get your product out of the uh, auger up there over the overload and get everything out so it does what it does it is a nice little hayloft and uh, storage for loose and baled hay and straw and on to the third building here this is a very simple garage uh, again not a huge amount of features or anything specifically with it but uh, it does carry on with the attention to detail with the uh, finishes and something I haven't talked about and mentioned is the timber and everything in here I just think it looks fantastic a lot and a lot of detail and effort has gone into getting some really nice textures even the concrete you know some concretes you can see in buildings looks like it's been stretched this looks like it is what it is but again triggers lights door 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 no fumbling around trying to find them no standing on the wrong trigger turning on lights when you're trying to open the door or anything like that they just work seamlessly it is perfect it is perfect i do really appreciate the attention that legacy has given to getting those triggers to work a little bit of decoration under there and if we just come on up the stairs into here we just got a little bit of a workshop space a little bit of woodworking space uh got a press there i've got a drill press sawmill or a table saw couch and a little office space there in the corner and uh, just a little door up here not sure what you'd use that for there's not really anything you can bring up here or uh, do with it it is all just decorative we do have a floor up above us as well with the ladder there uh, but nothing to see we can't get up the ladder it's just got some wood and planks just there as decoration a little bit of perforated tile pipe there as well so very simple uh does what it does does what it says it does stores uh enough space for three vehicles i suppose might be a car collection you might have a few pickups maybe a side by side or a quad bike or something you want to put in there maybe a vintage tractor perfect for all of those uh haven't commented either but they all do feature a good selection and well positioned outdoor lights this one's got one up there on the high point on the left uh, one above each of the doors as well none on the end but uh that is very nice to see very well done it's good detail just carrying on i mean once you've made an asset you may as well use it as much as you can and uh, i does do think it just adds beautifully to the style and finish in the uh in the models now the fourth and final building we have to look here is the dairy pasture now as i said in the intro this will hold 500 head of cattle uh, you can milk in it you can get milk from this uh, there is a trigger here behind the door which we will go and have a look at uh, legacy city was having a few issues with this light uh, the electrician hasn't done a very good job wiring it and it won't turn off it seems to be on a uh, on continuously so uh, he is working on trying to get that fixed but it's been causing him issues for a couple of months and he just cannot get to the bottom of it so uh, we'll put it down to the electrician but it does have everything you would expect so before we go and have a look inside the dairy because there's a few new features uh, that i have not seen in farming simulator either 22 or previous iterations before which i'm really excited to show you and we'll take a look at that but let's just before we do let's go and have a look around here out in the pasture so we do have our trigger here for the animals in fact i do want to buy some to show you so we'll just jump in here very quickly and uh, get some animals in the pasture and there we go we have just bought 120 head of cattle uh, 60 holstons and 16 60 brown swiss as well just to see what they look like when they are out there so you can see they are uh, all milling around roaming around out there we've got some gates here uh, we do have the water troughs in the middle of the pasture so you do have to get in here to fill those up there is a trigger over there to use uh, one thing i did notice and like is these gates uh, often you might find to get down on poly count numbers uh, the gates become very very square uh, very boxy in those tubular sections uh, I don't know whether it's the gloss finish on these or not but I think these just don't show up that boxiness or squareness that you might get on some other gates so that is very nice I do like that out here let's come and have a look 
got a couple of water troughs and we'll come and take a look at where the triggers are for those. Over here on the other side is our feed trough, uh, so that can be loaded from the outside there. Cattle come and feed through this grate on this side. Got another gate here, so depending on how you set up your uh, yard, you might be able to come in straight off the side to bring your water in or uh, what have you, depending on where things are positioned. Obviously we would probably use that gate over there just because of the way we've got things set up. So we'll go and have a look on the inside of the parlour here, get this door open. Now we've got a gate here across the end which is nice because uh, if you are milking you have that door open. And keep the gate closed and make sure the cows don't come out this side. Here we go, gate open. Very nicely detailed parlour, uh, we've got the stalls here on each side, we've got the uh, milking apparatus, cups as we'd call them here in New Zealand, I'm not sure what, if that's a universal term or not but uh, that is certainly what we'd describe them here as. Right through the middle, when we'll come out the other end, we will be back into the pasture. Just open that door up there. Got some lights here on the side. Got some fans, and just take note, most fans aren't working at the moment. We'll go and take a look at that in just a minute. Now, through the middle here is the trigger for the bedding, uh, and this has quite a unique bedding. Now, typically, obviously, we'd use straw. That's always what has been used in Farming Simulator. Uh, but through a couple of other little script mods which Thunder has written, one called Map Companion, and the other called on create extension now the map companion mod allows sand to be added to any map uh, that it is installed and it will automatically add the sand so when you use this dairy on your map as long as you have that little script extension you will be able to use sand and that is what you have here for your bedding so very nice to see that as a little bit of a difference i've been talking to legacy about maybe wood chips sawdust those kind of things that's something we use here as well a lot for bedding in uh cattle sheds so Something else to consider too. He was uh, quite like the idea, I think. So we'll see. Uh, but that's very cool to have a slightly different type of bedding. I do like that the light switch there. I'll turn those on. Makes it nice and bright. I do like the quality of the lighting too. Now, a couple more features I do want to look at. I mentioned to you the fans. If we open the, the uh, door here. Turn on the lights. Come in here to the control panel. You'll see, and I'm going to bring up the menu in the top left corner. So you see we've got a couple of options there. One called System On. I'm going to turn the system on. That is purely decorative. Uh, it's a vacuum line for the milking system. Something you'd expect to see in a milking shed. But you'll see if we move over here just to the right and see how close I am to those triggers, how clear they are. Calling on. I'm going to turn that calling on. And I'm just going to be quiet for a second. You'll hear the fan noise. There you go. I've just turned them off again and they've stopped. I'll turn it on. You can hear those fans start up. We'll just go over out and have a quick look. You will see that those fans are now running. Running, and in fact, you can see it from here. And there is going around, and we've got more audio. So very nice to have that as an option. Doesn't do anything, but it's a cool little feature. And then we'll move on around here to this door. We're just going to open the door up here. One more feature. Now, obviously, these are the milk tanks, but as you can see, I do have our triggers on. We've got our. Uh, Animal point, animal dialogue there. We've obviously got a slurry fill point on the right hand side there. I do believe that is our little manure uh, spawn area. So that we we your manure spawns. But we don't have a trigger for the milk. And there is a very good reason for that. We come over here. We've got two control panels. One on the left, one on the right. Now the first one we want to turn on here. You can see up the top we've got the power on command. If we turn that on, we're going to get a series of LED lights and screens pop up. And this is basically turning on the whole milk control system. Or at least simulating it. That will now, if we come over to this one, now gives us an option here to turn the power on here. And we'll see the lights start to turn on, and while they turn on, I'm just going to spin around here, and in just a second, there appears our milk trigger. And that now means we can load milk out of the vats, out of the silos there, into your trailer, your tra tanker, whatever it is you're using to haul milk to your cell point. So just another little layer of uh, realism that I do like. Now of course you could leave that on permanently, it doesn't cost you anything, it doesn't use power or do anything like that. So if you didn't want to go through that process every time you had to sell milk, you could leave the trigger up. But just another little feature that I do think is fantastic. So that is pretty much everything in the dairy farm. There is one other little feature I do want to show you, but we need to skip tonight to do that, and uh, we'll take a little bit of a look at that, probably just before we wrap things up. But for now, let's go and grab a few tractors. We're going to go through and test a few of these different pieces out. Uh, we'll put some sand in there, we'll try and get some milk spawned, we'll feed the animals, put some water in, and uh, also test out the hayloft and a few other things while we're at it.
We've got the smallest trailer of sand possible here, just to test things, and there we go, we do get a trigger here to unload our sand. Now, I probably won't see the fill plane arise for this because uh, we've got too many animals and not enough sand to really make a difference to that, but I expect there is probably a fill plane which will pop up to show you how much sand you've got. So there is the trigger for that. Let's go and uh, test out the TMR, feed the animals, and put some water in as well. So we'll run our TMR mixer here along the side, and there we get our trigger. See that will start loading into there, and uh, we should see the fill plane start to pop up. There you go. There is our food. Now, I think this is a cute little novelty that uh, has been added to the game, but don't you love that when you feed your animals, they all come running over to get some food? Uh, anyone who's grown up on a farm or lived around animals will know second you enter a field and go and feed them hay or anything like that they will be there in seconds so uh, another nice little touch that giants added in i think that is pretty universal across the game very cool to see and lastly our water trigger here is in the center with the troughs uh, if we come down one side here you'll see we get a trigger there for a little bit just turn that off because i just want to drive around this cow and uh, there's no triggers on these sides they are purely on the ends of the uh, two troughs we'll just wrap around this side see the trigger there so you do need to go down either side of it like that and uh, not across them I guess for a uh, best way to describe that. So you can see we've uh, got our animals down the bottom here. See we've got our water, sand and our food in there as well. So now we're just waiting for that productivity to go up and to get some milk produced. We'll skip forward a little bit of time once we've looked at the other things and uh, get that going. And just to demonstrate the workshop trigger, I've just brought the tractor and water trailer in here. We'll go down here into the pit. We can walk all the way under there. I'm not having to crouch or anything like that. We can get here to our workshop trigger you can see we've got both the uh, tank and the tractor there if we needed to do any maintenance or uh, repair them in any way we can do that there customization anything you want to do very very cool um and in fact i don't think i've ever been underneath a tractor and farm some certainly seen the bottom of them a few times uh go and check out a video on no man's land a wee while ago uh, you might see me rolling a tractor and just our last little test we're going to do here for these is the hayloft We'll just come over here to the trigger we will get this pop up here for our hay we'll just get that start to unload there let's see we'll get the unload we'll just drive around the other side and start filling it back up so back here under the auger you see we've got the option there well we didn't get the choice because we already had hay so it was only going to put hay back in and obviously exactly the same for the straw no difference there between the two uh nice little audio there it sounds to be that uh, we get a little bit of sound of a fan or blower or something like that putting the hay or straw up into the roof space and just as a final little test, I do believe, here we go, nails are gone, take that one off, and it should disappear too. Here we go, all gone. So you can, if you choose to do bales rather than loose product, you can put that there, and it will get put up into storage in the uh, in the top of the loft as well. So very nice to see. You can see there actually, you can see our straw and hay that we have already stored from both the bales and the trailers. So we've got the tanker here backed in, we've fast forwarded time at a few hours and we've got about 450 litres of milk not a huge amount but enough to test things out so you can see we've got no trigger there uh, i'm pressing my refill button and nothing's happening so let's go and turn the pumps back on and see if that makes a change so you can see our trigger has now appeared and if we press the button we've got 450 litres of milk in the trailer so uh that's very cool i do really really like that uh, little level of detail that's been thought of and considered and implemented into the map i think uh, lexi's done a fantastic job with that so there we go, that is the four buildings. The dairy there, uh, spin around this side, we've got the workshop, the power wash or wash bay and cold store, all in one. We've got the hayloft and then the garage. The four placeable buildings that are coming from Legacy Ag very, very soon. PC only release, uh, itch.io and Facebook. I'll leave some links down in the description for the best place to find Legacy. But we're not finished yet. We are going to go take a look at the Pro Seed Box that he has also been working on and which is currently with Giants for testing. So here in front of me you can see we have the Pioneer Pro Seed Box. Uh, these come fully loaded with seed when you buy them, but they are emptyable and they are refillable, which I think is great. I know we had some uh, seed boxes like this and a seed tender which used the boxes in FS19. Uh, I used them on Medicine Creek, but unfortunately the boxes, once they were empty, they were basically useless. You had to sell them uh, and you couldn't refill them. These ones are 100% refillable which is fantastic. So we've got one here on the right. This is the full one, uh, which we will demonstrate there loading into a cedar. And then the other here on the left is the empty one, which we will go and top up there from the uh, 
bulk supply point and put some fertilizer in it to top up the spreader. Now, to make them fillable, the seed box has a connector on all four sides. So you can pick it up with the forks, like we're going to there with the uh, wheel loader, pick it up and load it. But you can also pick it up and attach to it with a skid steer, a front loader, a wheel loader, and a tally handler. And these has attaches on all four sides to be able to do that. And that is required to make it fillable because it basically needs to be recognized as a attached implement, uh, something on the vehicle to be filled. So we'll demonstrate that in just a minute. When you're in the store, where will you find them? These are under pallets here. Open that up, you'll see we'll get a fully loaded uh, seed box, 1,584 litres of seed for $1,500. Now I imagine the 1,584 may be a conversion from bushels or a weight measure or something like that. Not sure exactly what drove that, but uh, there you go. That is what you will get when you buy it. So uh, they do come loaded. You can't buy them empty. So let's test them out. Let's go and put some seed in the seeder and some fertilizer in the spreader. Now we'll start off with the seed and uh, get that loaded in. And then we'll uh, look at filling them up and putting some fertilizer into the spreader as well. So just like any other pallet, you can get in there and pick it up pretty smoothly. I think we just come down here over the seeder. Hopefully we can get close enough to the uh, fill point. And there we go, you can see uh, the animation there coming out the bottom of the box. You actually see the box moving up as we're taking weight out and the seed going into the uh, seeder there. So only just able to reach from this side, probably would have been better coming into the side. That has taken actually that whole box. So that will actually be a good chance to demonstrate this. So if we go over here underneath the unload or the uh, bulk buy point. Put that there, we don't get a fill option. We're under the trigger, we're in the right spot, there's no way we can fill that up. We'll just back out of the way and grab this other one. So when you drive up to the seed box here, you get the option to attach it. We don't have any forks on or anything like that, but you can now see up in the top left corner, we've got a little attachment. We drive over here underneath the uh, fill point, we can fill it. Seeds or solid fertilizer. We're going to put that, fill that up with solid fertilizer, 1584 liters, same quantity. And then we should be able to come in here behind the uh, fertilizer spreader, lift that up. Drive over top, mindful of the weight, and there we go. We are getting that fertilizer into the spreader. Watch the weight come onto the back of the tractor as well. I do really enjoy those weight animations and the uh, physics for that. But there we go, that is uh, emptied out. Now, of course, we can put that one down, uh, go and fill it up, we can store it, we can use it for whatever, put it on the back of a truck. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. I love it, I love it. And just to prove the concept, we can uh, drive up here and attach it to this loader as well. Now, that will work on any side there is an attacher on each and every side of this box so it doesn't matter which side you approach it from whether it's the side with the uh, seed label on it or whether it's the pioneer branded one or any of the sides you can attach to it so it uh, works fantastically and it does exactly what it's meant to do i think uh, again from a realism point of view this is a next step from using the big bags or uh, the pallets of seed or anything like that anyone who wants to play more realistically will love it i think it's fantastic now Legacy did say he does have plans uh, while it's in for testing at the moment as both I believe a PC and console release. He does have plans for potentially a PC only version in the future which could have multiple options for seed. So you could start seeing some of the options hefty, decalab, or decalab sorry, uh, anything. He talked about EU, Australia, USA, Canada, brands from all around the world. Uh, I'd like to hopefully convince him to put New Zealand in there as well. So that is the uh, that is the Pro Seed box that is in testing at the moment with Giants uh, coming to a PC or console near you. Now before we wrap things up, I did say there was one other little thing I wanted to show you, and that necessitates skipping time forward tonight. So we'll do that very quickly, and then we'll take a look. So we're just getting into twilight here. It is 7 p.m. You can see the lights have come on on the outside of the shed, including the uh, illuminated LAC signs which I think is very nice but if you pay careful attention here we go see that green light flying through the sky using another script from Thunder called on create extension Legacy and Thunder have added fireflies so you can look around your pasture and at night you can see fireflies randomly flying around here and around the dairy shed I think that is just another cool little idea I just think it, it is the most wonderful thing to see these little green lights that just appear and then disappear uh, just as they would in real life such a novel idea uh, and just fantastic to see the community going to extents to just add something like this it's very cool very cool 
So there we have it, four new buildings by Legacy Ag, which will be coming soon to PC. Also featured in Ashton Corners map by MRG Mapping. And the uh, Pioneer Pro Seed Box, which is currently in testing for all platforms on uh, the Giants Mod Hub. So keep an eye out for that one coming soon. I know it's been through one round of testing, had a few little issues which have been rectified and sent back to Giants again. Fantastic to see so many new features packed into these along with some top quality sheds. The textures, uh, the models are all fantastic. Really, really liked looking at them and I think they're going to be a great addition both in uh, the map they're being used in but also be made available for you to use on any map. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to finding an opportunity to use them in some of my upcoming series so keep an eye out for them uh, popping up in there. Big thanks to Legacy for sharing these with me and uh, on his behalf a huge thank you to Thunder, Louisiana Mapping and Trailer Park Farms for the help, uh, particularly with the scripts in that from Thunder and from Louisiana Mapping and Trailer Park Farms on the shop here on the left with the uh, workshop and wash bay all in one. Fantastic to see. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Do keep an eye out for these coming out soon. I will, like I said earlier, I will put some links to uh, Legacy's itch.io and Facebook page where you can keep up to date with any updates uh any releases or anything like that from him including any uh any future things i know he's got a couple more things he wants to add into this uh shed pack uh i think some larger storage buildings which weren't going to be on ashton corners so they were on the back burner but something he wants to bring now that that is uh nearing completion so i hope you've all enjoyed that uh thank you all very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one